So how do you actually market yourself as a graphic designer? I used to be a really shy kid and I actually thought sharing my work was actually cringy and I used to think that reaching out to clients was salesy and you probably have seen me now do so many videos. I'm online, I post a lot of content and I'm confident. But before this, I wasn't actually like this when I was younger. I had to learn over the years, like how to market myself, how to promote my services. Cause in reality, no one's gonna come and do it for you. You have to muster up that courage to actually do it and learn how to do it well. Because if you wanna be successful as a designer, you need to be really good at sharing your content, communicating with people, talking to clients, uh, being willing to share your work and your failures and you know grow your skill and your craft as a designer. I've been freelancing for a decade now and I have learned some things on how to actually market yourself. I'm gonna try and give you practical advice and towards the end, I am gonna show some other real life examples of other designers, how they share their work. Hopefully you'll get some ideas as well and I will put the timestamps below so you can go check that out um, if you wanna skip some of the juicy tips I'm gonna share. But anyway, one of the key things is I stopped caring what people think because once you do that, then you won't get imposter syndrome and you won't fear uh, posting online and sharing your work because at the end of the day, you gotta realize everyone's starts at level zero. It's like a game, you know, you start off with your character, you don't have all the skills and the upgrades and the power-ups to actually go out there and fight the bosses and the creatures, the, you know, the harder um, creatures and stuff. You have to be a designer that develops a skill over time. It takes years to really get good, but if you just focus honing your craft and, you know, you don't have to go to uni or anything, but as long as you put in the effort and the work, you can actually achieve results. But you gotta stop think caring what people think, number one. It's all about that mindset shift. And you gotta stop seeing yourself as just a designer or a technician or a freelancer and start seeing yourself as a, a partner. Start seeing yourself as someone who offers value, some a, a creative person with ideas that can help pe people's businesses grow, help them make money, help them increase their sales or customers or their trust with their audience, whatever it is, you gotta start thinking like this. And it brings you on to point number one, which is positioning. Now, when it comes to positioning, you, you gotta remember that people only buy from who they know, like, and trust. And a lot of designers get this wrong. They fail to build trust online or with potential clients. So they lack reviews, their work doesn't look um, the best, like it doesn't look excellent. The way they communicate, they maybe have typos or when they're texting, they don't sound very professional, they sound desperate. And so what that tends to happen is you lose that trust. Once that trust gets cut, it's hard to build it back up. It's all about positioning, framing a image in the mind of that potential client that you're talking to or that business owner that you're talking to. And so, so it's all about perception, the way you sound, the way you feel. And when it comes to positioning, you wanna position yourself as a luxury service, a premium service because if you are focused on just delivering cheap work it's going to be a race to the bottom because there's people overseas that can do it really really cheap and they'll just go to the lowest five dollars twenty dollars on fiverr a cheap low budget client will just go there instead of coming to you so try and position yourself as a premium service and if your work is not up to that then just work your way up i remember i used to do like two hundred dollar projects three four hundred dollars like not even my first project was like 30 bucks i did a logo for a friend online and so i built my way up and now i can charge three thousand five 5,000, 10,000 for a project because I have many skills, I know how to work with clients, I can do the full package, not just a logo. Position yourself as a quality service and that connects to like how you how you sound on your website, your copywriting. So for example, you wanna be really specific. Don't say, I design beautiful logos or I design cool websites. Try and be more specific and say something like this. I help FinTech SaaS startups get more users, get more user signups. Or you can say, I create high converting websites for fitness coaches who wanna get more clients. So you can see I'm very, I'm getting more specific into the industry and to the result and the goal that we're achieving or the problem that we're solving. So think about results, think about what your client wants, their needs, their desires. They wanna most likely save time, increase their revenue um, or expand to a new audience. Like those are the typical ones that when you're thinking of a small business when they wanna grow or scale up. And so just remember, position yourself as a premium logo designer, web designer, brand designer, and make sure that your work reflects that. And if you're just a student, that's okay. Just keep doing content projects every month or every few weeks and just build your portfolio up and get better and better with each one. And I want you to have that mindset of that you're a partner with these clients. Don't just try and get a client and retain them for one project. You want to keep them for the long term. See them as a long term partner because 
it's better to make money like that, you know, doing $1,000 a month, right? Which is $12,000 a year if you have one client. But if you do multiple clients like that, you can make 5K a month. Think about it. Instead of just doing one project for $500 or one project for $1,000, try and get a monthly thing going, a monthly retainer or a subscription or a consistent basis where you can actually help that business grow and you can do the design, templates, whatever they need. Now, the second ingredient to marketing yourself really well is actually specialization. For me personally, I did a bunch of different graphic design. I did print design, logos, a bit of website stuff, did like flyers, business cards, you know, brochures, did a bit of everything really, a bit, a bit of illustration. And I wasn't, I was pretty good at most of it, but like when it came to like illustration and website, I wasn't the best. And so I was just really good at like mainly like logo designs and generic stuff. But what I did is I honed in and focused on logo design and brand identity. And that helped me position myself as an expert in that field. It built my credibility and people would come to me all the time for a logo. And the reason why I did specialize is because when you specialize, you can actually charge more. And there's statistics out there that show if a specialist can actually earn more because they're, it, it's a premium service. They've honed their craft, more experience. Um, they're faster at doing the work as well. So it's ultimately better than just being a generalist. But it doesn't mean you don't learn other skills because personally, I have a lot of skills. I can do video editing. I can also do website design really well. I can do a bit of 3D stuff. Obviously, I can use AI and things like that. So I've got a lot of skills. So when I when the client comes to me for a logo, I, I get them in for that. But then I say, hey, do you need help with the website? Do you need help with marketing strategy you know start laying out all the services i can offer them because i built those multiple skills but first you want to specialize pick something whether it's web design logo design illustration identity work web development or web flow or framer pick something and just put that out there on your socials and just try and stick to that when you're sharing content because it's just going to be more easy to be more consistent and people when they're searching up keywords with the seo it's going to you're going to pop up when you have that in your name you know um, captions all that stuff so remember it's better to specialize than just be a generalist but once you do specialize then be a generalist internally so then you can offer all the other services to your clients the next thing that i see a lot of designers do not doing and something i used to avoid but is actually networking actually going to events will help you not just design events but business events meetups that type of thing i remember there was this time i think about four years ago there was like a meetup every second week on a thursday and so every second thursday i would go to this meeting would meet at like a cafe and there'll probably be about you know 20 to 10 to 20 small local businesses and it was just good to connect with hand business cards everyone got to share a bit how they can help someone a lot of the people were like just business owners you know doing like one was doing construction or marketing or like dental or health stuff so it was a bit of a mix of people but i actually got to get up one time and share a bit about design and branding and how to do content and that was kind of cool because i got some leads from that um they weren't the best high paying jobs but hey if you can make 500 or a thousand bucks here and there that was cool for um, when I was just like, you know, starting to build my network up. Think about events you can go to and you don't need a big social following. You know, you don't need 50,000, 10,000. You just need to be proactive in the community, in your local city. Find events, find business events, go on an eventbrite or meetup.com or Facebook. Look up what local events are happening. Try and get plugged in, go to these events and build your network. Because if you have a big network, you can actually get a lot more referrals. You know, once you have trust with the other business owners, they'll remember you like, oh, that guy that does logo design, he's really good at that. Or Oh, Jeremy, yeah, he can do he can do Webflow websites. Uh, he, he, I'll message him. He'll probably help you out. You want to be that go-to person in the mind of people that's good for, you know, a specific thing. And what I personally do is like, I like collecting connecting with other agency owners. So other people who are older, me, older than me, they have like other design agencies or they do marketing and I connect with them. And I'm like, hey, if you have any overflow work, you know, feel free to um, reach out to me. Or if you've got a project you want to collaborate on, I'm open to collaboration. So just having these conversations, meeting up with people, like I'd, there's a few times I've actually go to people's um, office Offices, meet up with them, have a meeting, just chat, hang out. You know, I'm not asking anything from them. I'm just trying to um, be helpful and just build that friendship and that connection. And it's always paid off in the end. Like it just be genuine, be helpful, resonate with people, be relatable. Don't be a leech. Don't be someone who's, you know, just desperate or doesn't add anything to value to the table. Try and be someone that is actually helpful and friendly. At the end of the day, it's all about strong relationships. And if you know business owners, they're going to refer you work. And typically as well, you can actually go on online conferences as well. Um, and you can connect people with chat and stuff but typically person to person is always 100 times better so i recommend grab one or two designer friends you know maybe from school or college or something and go with them to a conference and just go around meeting people together like have
have a tag team or have a friend that will help you if you're not, not as confident but it's really good once you do it you're like oh this is fun like being new people you know sharing your portfolio or maybe you got a cool business card i don't know like think of ways to you know make an impression with, with other other people other businesses other um direct creative directors that type of thing now the next thing is make your portfolio accessible i personally used to send a pdf over email which wasn't the best method like i did get a few clients that way but nowadays i like to send them to a nice behance case study on my website that i custom built with all my nice design images because it's just easy to quickly scroll through and look at all my design work because like oh they can really see your skills like that really fast and you look at the mock-ups cover images how i design my thinking you know that type of thing you got to make it beautiful you got to make it easy to click one link and they can see it at a glance and yeah just make it easy to use like there's so many websites out there i did a video about some of the website builders out there to build your website you can watch that i'll probably link it below use a templated site where you can build and create a nice landing page where someone can see your nice case studies click on the work and just you know scroll through it it really makes that difference when someone can see your work without having to jump through all these hoops and things you want to make it fast, smooth, and, and seamless. Another thing that's important is actually getting testimonials. So every time you have a client and you've done good work for them, that's like a requisite. Like you have to be able to do good work. Then ask for number one, a testimonial, either on for your LinkedIn or for your on Google, right? Because um, that, typically that's what I do. And that's just going to be better for when people search you up. It's like, oh, they got five-star reviews, which is going to be great. So that's why I make sure I please my clients as much as possible with the value, with the work. So then I keep getting testimonials. And then I also ask for a referral so if they know someone that could use my service that's going to help me get more clients more leads because at the end of the day if you don't ask it's not going to happen you have to be proactive and actually be like hey client hey like i'm i'm available for more work and i'd love if you can recommend me to your a friend or if you know an agency or maybe you have um, someone you know that is looking for a designer or a new website i'd love to work with them and that would be really great and a little bonus tip as well once you're done with working with the client you can offer them a discount say 10 15 percent on the next project so if you want to do if they want to do more work with you, you give them a discount and they're going to love you for it so those are some general practical things you can think about when marketing yourself online now i'm going to show you some pro, um, profiles pages other designers that are uh, marketing themselves really well and hopefully you get some ideas so first up we've got alan peters now he's been a designer for a long time and you might be starting out but that's okay you can still get some ideas and copy the sort of the formula or the the process and apply it to your own designs so alan peters what he does um really well at the moment is doing sort of these um logo design breakdowns now you don't have to redesign a big brand use your own local business that you work with or your own concept projects it doesn't have to be some massive brand but what he does really well is he shows like his redesign. So for example, like he did this one for Gatorade. You can see he's just showing it in a simple carousel, his updated logo that he did, which is great. So you can show your work, just simple carousel images in a square format, or you can do something um, like this one where he breaks down the logo, he gets a pencil and he just um, shows like little updates he would make to the logo. And then at the end, he's got a um, a consistent song he uses, upbeat, and he shows the mock-ups and the new design that he does. So definitely um, check that out. Another great designer, um, CJ Corley Design. He's a young designer from the UK. Uh, he's great at making content, but he's also uh, great at doing identities and logo design. So you can see some of his work. He's got some cool reels. He likes doing a bit of storytelling, so he tries to make it a bit more, you know, entertaining, a bit more fun. So he'll have just like a hook, and then he'll show the work, and then will have like this back and forth like showing illustrator showing him changing colors the logo that type of thing you know you, you can already des just design the work and then what you do you go back and you film yourself like making little changes that's all you could have to do it's not too complicated if you don't want to do more of a storytelling thing you can do that where it's like oh i got an idea and like use your face if you don't want to show your face that's fine you can just use your phone and just like show your work that's another method that i sometimes use as well so you can look him up he's got some really great designs here as you can see, um, lots of reels, and then you can do sort of the carousel um, thing as well. Next, we've got Carl Miller. Now, he posts on Twitter and LinkedIn. He owns a design agency, but he posts some really great identity work. So, for example, I can see here, you know, he'll do some nice mock-ups. Sometimes he'll, um, like, talk about the design or the client. You can do something simple like this, simple video of just, like, scrolling through the brand guidelines. That's a great way as well, as you can see. Just a simple um, editing tool. He's actually using Jitter 
um, Jitter is something. If you're not an Adam, you don't, if you don't know After Effects, you can use something like Jitter. Even in Photoshop, they have the timeline. Or you can use like Premiere Pro. So you can edit in something like this. Makes editing super easy. Um, but yeah, just liking. Sometimes he shows the Figma file, which is cool. Like this, just screenshots. Just being like really just genuine and raw. But the work looks really great. So he posts some good ideas. Simple animation, simple work. Dimitri uh, Lepesov, I always see his logo designs. He's like a logo identity designer. He'll do the bento style grid, showing the design, showing some very beautiful mock-ups, some packaging, you know, colors. And he just shows, hey, contact me for logo designer branding. And he puts his email there. Obviously, what you want to do is try and have a professional email. So like, hello at your name.com or, you know, something similar to that. Um, it just looks more professional than having a Gmail or Hotmail. Um, sometimes he shows some animation, some 3D stuff. Like, that's really cool. Showing what he's working on. Redesign concept. So he stay, says it's a redesign for fun. And then he, uh, another good way is like, ask questions like, what do you think? Um, or maybe you have different options. Would you go with option A, B, or C? You know, just to create engagement. Some more design here. Love the bento thing. You can't go wrong with the bento grid, but it's just a great way to show your designs. Next up, we've got Halaska. Now, you can see, I like the way he displays his work, but also how he communicates. He focuses on FinTech Web3 um, partners, and he does UI. So he says, industry leading design partner for Web3. So he's clear their premium quality design. They're seen as a partner. They work with you. They have a dedicated team, and they focus on Web3. And then you can see full service design team, products, websites, and apps. And then you can see the work right here, which is super cool. And then you can scroll through the site. They've got pricing. They've got the case studies here. Uh, let's click on this one. You can see the image. A little zoom in effect. Beautiful dashboard. So they communicate really well. They're very specific um, in, in what they offer and who they help. And then they have nice logos here for social proof, which is really great. Next, we've got Alex, Alex Aperios from the UK as well. He's got a website and Instagram, but he mainly focuses on Instagram now, which is cool. But I love how he shows his um, icons like this. Just flashing some different logos he's done. And he's got a variety of styles and logos, which are cool. But he, he's just great quality. He shares some concept work. So for example, I'm working on a little personal branding project for my own office, something for merch. More coming soon. You can see he gets some likes there, some impressions. But I think it's fun to play around. You've got to do some side projects, come up with some ideas. Doing some cool mock-ups. Like, this is fun. Like, look at this. I love this A. love the colors here. Practice your logos. You'll share some logo design work like this. Different letter marks. Bam. Really simple. I love his just simplicity approach. Just share your work and just, you know, share your creativity, really. Vadim Karazan is another guy. Brand designer, art director. I like he's got these bento animated bentos, beautiful work. He has an agency called WeGrow, as you can see. But love the animated bentos here with a mix of images as well, just clean mockups. Um, shares his logo concepts. And another cool thing he does is like today's inspiration on dailybranding.co. So he'll just share some inspiration that he likes. And it will inspire other designers, even other businesses that are looking at like, oh, this looks really nice. Imagine I can get that for my brand. So. Here's a quick ID on just posting inspiration and also posting your um, design work. As you can see, I've got heaps of stuff on here. Today's inspiration, just four images, beautiful work. Next, we've got eight seconds, Sam Hawks. He crafts memorable experiences. I love his uh, Instagram page. Just really cool, really creative. Cool design, bit of animation, bit of 3D. He does the whole carousel, animated carousels, as you can see. It just adds that level of complexity, level of quality that you don't see everywhere. But the way he displays the work is just clean, beautiful. And then he's got a bento style design here. But I just love his bentos as well. Look at this. Awesome quality, very futuristic. Um, he's showing just uh, all his projects reflecting on 2023. I like, it's like a, a whole gear of design. It's a great way to show off your projects like this. Love that. I'm going to even save that one. Um, but yeah, you can see how he just shows beautiful mock-ups, beautiful background shots, and a nice solid logo. It just stands out. And you can see, for example, on his uh, dribble as well, he, you can see his logo style. He just has clean, like, tech futuristic logos with a nice mad background. Just it looks so cool. Like, I love it. Love the style. And you can see 
because he's consistent with that. Next, we've got Vask Studio by Lewis. I think his name is from Venezuela. He's got another great style as well. Great with identity and logos. But look how he presents his work. Sometimes he does reels like this. So from sketch to like final design and just la lining it up all in the same um, exact point where the logo is. It just looks very mesmerizing. It just makes your brain like, oh, this is nice. Uh, and you can just scroll through heaps of stuff here. Lovely how he just shows his carousels as well in unique ways, unique images. Beautiful. For the female designers out there, Kenzie Green design is really great. Love her style. You can see she's got like these packaging design and she'll show you like designing the logo. You know, he's doing some patterns and showing the mock up. Just really simple with the phone. You can put it on a tripod and just show yourself like moving stuff around the artboard, designing a little bit. You don't have to do a full design for the whole day. You just like do, you know, 10, 20 minutes showing some things that you're designing and it just saves you so much time. It looks really cool. She's got some reels. Um, but she's got that cool, cool style there. Uh, one is Hannah Wo. She does some badass designs, some cool packaging. Love the backgrounds, the grunginess, the grit, lots of bold colors in the simple carousel vibe. And then she puts a whole, like her captions, she's telling a story, she's telling the brand, she's sharing her opinions. And then she's like, my, my DMs are open. So she's inviting, it's fun, it's cool. Um, you know, just think of creative ways how you can show, like using a lot of effects and imagery to catch your eye. Um, even this one's kind of cool. Love the stickers and the and the design. It's just cool. It's cool. A few more, and then we're good to, and then we're done. Melissa Yeager is great. Um, great messaging, holistic branding that speaks to the soul. I love her. Me her copywriting is just on point. She's a strategist as well, so she's really great in how she positions her brand. It feels premium. Great text. Um, just everything's really, really great. I don't know if she's doing services anymore because she took a break, I think, but really great website here. Next, we've got Luzon or Lucian. We help brands create digital experiences that connect with their audience. So I love that simple one line. It really helps communicate, you know, what they do. And then you can see you've got some nice animation here. And then the case studies there, but we can click on um, and you can look at the design, which I think is really nice. Hello, bigidea.com. I just want to highlight the messaging again. We're an agency rescuing brands from the sea of sameness. So trying to be creative, um, but also having like beautiful work as well. They're an agency. They do a bit of um, a bit of everything, I think. Marketing, design, everything. So check out their website. It's cool. And then lastly, just to iterate on that point of like getting, getting testimonials. If I go to my LinkedIn and I scroll all the way down, you can see what I used to do is like get testimonials from as many people as I could. So if you see this one from Lisa Hastings in 2016, that was my credit director from my internship and she helped me out a lot. And I just asked her to give me a review and this really helped me like look legit, build that social proof with other credit directors that were hiring other studios um, that wanted to hire me and stuff. So try and ask your credit directors or whoever your boss is for referrals, for advice, be humble and learn. And yeah, you're gonna make it as a designer. If you do wanna learn more tips on how to actually freelance, how to run your business, I do have a video course on Skillshare or on my website. You can check the link below, click my link and you can get one month free on Skillshare. But it'll teach you everything I know about how to freelance and work with clients. Hope you have an awesome day. Talk to you soon.